almost caught one yesterday. I chased him, but he fled. But if I told my dad, he'd say, It's, it's all inside, inside your head. head. You really cannot catch them or find their whereabouts. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. The dishwasher. Can't catch me. You won't catch me. <laughs> Enjoying yourself without a care in the world. What? We have more cares than both of you together. Yeah, anyone can see that. Wanna bet me? How about we try doing your job and you try doing ours? And whoever loses has got to grant the other's wish. We have a dishwasher here in the kitchen that isn't working, and you're distracting us with your nonsense. Wait a sec. Let's do it. Find the broken part. Good as done. Find it where? <laughs> you're the adults now. Go and find it. Just look out for yourselves. And you kids, time for school. And I better not hear that you were misbehaving. Was I there when they taught us about dishwashers at school? <laughs> the main element of a dishwashing machine is this part called the sprayer, which looks like a propeller. After the dishwasher's pump delivers water, it is warmed, mixed with detergent, and then pushed up with high pressure. That makes the propeller spin very quickly, so it can shoot out the water with a force strong enough to wash all of the dirt off the plates and glasses. But it does it carefully, so that dishes not only come out sparkling, but unbroken as well. Is this a parent-teacher conference? It's not! It's an experiment! For today, I'm Simka. <laughs> and I'm Nolik. All right. Who's ready to tell the rest of the class what we studied yesterday? Simka. Yesterday? Oh. You forgot. Be seated. That's an F. Mm-hmm. I think the problem is in the control panel. I wonder if the dishwasher ran out of water. Ah. Uh. Papus, don't argue with your wife. Yoink. This one is working. And so is this. <laughs> you know what? Why don't we just wash those dishes? But that would be cheating. No one will find out. The dishes will all be nice and clean, and bam, we're the winners. <laughs> Check it out, we are all done. How come the indicators aren't lit? Fixies have to fix things. And what do you call this? And you, did you both go to school today? Of course we did. I, I mean Simka, got an F for her answer. Well, thanks, Marcia. And did you play with Tom Thomas? You know that we don't show ourselves to people. Tom Thomas isn't any human. He's our friend. Either you play with him, or you both lose, just like we did. No way. We'll play another round. The earliest kitchenware appeared about 7,000 years ago. Early people made these containers from stone or wood. Another kind of container for holding food was woven baskets. The baskets would be lined with clay for durability. Once, one of these baskets fell into a bonfire, and lo and behold, the wood on the outside burned away, while the clay was now hard as a rock. That discovery led to the invention of clay pottery that is still in use to this very day. Later on came the development of glass, metal, and cast iron cookware. The world's richest people can even have food served to them on dishes of silver or gold. Today, kitchenware is not only a practical convenience, but it can decorate any home as well. Forget it. This is impossible. Let's just tell them we give up. Zinka, how come this button is crooked and not sticking out? Because the button got jammed! Yeah! No way! You figured out what was wrong! I'm glad I can 
dragging this around. Diddy! One. Papus, two, we fixed everything! Three? Really? Does this mean you're playing with him? Four. What? You think we're some quitters? Ha! Five. Then which one of us is the Ready winner? Or not, here I come. Let's call it a draw. Each team gets one wish. Our team mm. wants you to fix my app. And you finish this game with him. Piece, Piece of, of cake. cake. Mm. <sighs> the construction set. Tom Thomas. Huh? Why are you sitting in the dark? Because it looks better this way. Check it out. Oh, oh look at that. What a beautiful castle this is. It's like out of a fairy tale. No, it's from my construction set. I put it together myself. Class. Oh, let's be knights. I love that game. And so does the old dragon. Who locked the fair princess inside of the castle. I get to be the princess. Oh, where is the brave knight who will rescue me from the evil dragon? Hang on, I'll save you, Simka. No, look, you really don't look like a knight. You don't even have armor. Armor. Wait, hang on a second. A construction set lets you build lots of different things from a set of parts. Put them together like this, you've got a house. Like this, a car. Or like this, a spaceship. The parts might be made of metal and connected with screws. Some construction sets have plastic parts you click together. Other sets are models where the pieces are glued together. You can also find magnetic sets. Touch the parts together and magnetic attraction makes them stick. Beware, dragon! Already. And where is the castle? The planet has been attacked by robots! And they have destroyed the castle! Oh, and they've kidnapped me! And are you still a princess? Of course I'm still a princess! Oh, save me, brave knight! Right! <laughs> What's going on? This is a magnetic construction set, and your armor is made out of metal, so you got attracted to the magnets. <laughs> Tom Thomas, it's not fair. Unattract me. <laughs> okay. Oh, rescue me! Help me! You gotta save me! Hang in there. I'll be right back. I gotta change my costume. Simka, stay right there. And don't even think about running away. And so it goes. Everyone's abandoned the poor princess. Oh. Simka's my older sister. That's why she thinks it's okay to get bossy with me. But I don't let it get to me because she's very smart and a quick thinker. She knows gadgets better than just about anybody. It's always interesting with Simka. And she's really smart, too. She gets nothing but A's at school. Everyone in our class loves her. Only she and Verda don't get along too well. It's because of fire. Well, you get it. Sometimes Simka can be way too strict with me. You can't do this. You shouldn't do that. But if an exciting adventure comes along, she's always right there with us. Simka's brave. She's got the skills. Yeah, she's always ready to take on a challenge. I've got an awesome sister. But just keep that between us. Because if you tell her, it might go to her head. How long am I supposed to sit here? Hey, anyone? Hey! Oh! Help me! Soccer! 
Sokka, you give that back! Leave, leave this room! Are you okay? I can't leave you alone for a minute. Yeah, I think we're okay. Nola got here and saved me from Chusaka for real! Just like a real live knight! Oh, come on, pretty knight! I'm not kidding. You deserve to be one. And to protect every living creature from pesky Chusakas everywhere. I promise. <laughs> oh, valiant Fixie, I now pronounce you to be a knight. Sir Nola! Hooray! 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 Kitty! Musical notes. Yeah! No! Yeah! No! Yeah! No! Hey, what a thoughtful conversation you're having there. Been going on for a while? Yeah! No! Simka, please tell Moloch what this is. A present, right? Uh-huh. From Katya. And it's got a secret code right here, you see? <laughs> There's no secret on there. They're just notes. Musical notes. Ha! Huh. See? I told you. The squiggles could have been music. I don't believe you. Come on, two people said the very same thing. Simka is not a people. She's a fixie. Anyway, there are two of us. You're ganging up on me. We're not ganging up on you, Nolik. Music is something you can play or listen to with your ears. But that's not all. You can also write it down. When we want to write down words, we use letters. And if we want to write down music, we use special symbols called musical notes. There are seven notes. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, and ti. The higher the sound, the higher the note sits on a set of five horizontal lines called a musical staff. Notes that look like this last longer, and notes like this are short, quick notes. Thanks to sheet music, people can read music like reading a book, and then sing or play it. Until I hear you play me what you say is there, I won't believe you. On what? You know that we don't have any instruments. Try using spoons to play it. You think you're being funny? Hey, stop arguing. I know how we can play this song. We can use water. Water? <laughs> Let me get this straight. Are you trying to play the music, or are you trying to wash it? That's right. Pour it in there, Tom Thomas. Some more. Hear how the sound changes? Uh-huh. Stop. Now, start pouring water in this next glass until you hear the note called T. You got it. Now pour here? Yeah. We still have one note left. And what do I do if my mom comes home? What do I say I'm doing? That you're learning to play music while you're washing the dishes. That's it. That's the high do. Now we have all the notes we need. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, and do. Class. Go on, Tom Thomas, play! How about we all play it together? Musical sounds can be produced in a variety of different ways. Violins and cellos are played with a bow. When the bow is rubbed against the string, the string vibrates like it's shivering. And that produces a beautiful sound. A guitar also has strings, but they make sound when they are plucked. And inside a piano are special hammers that hit the strings when the piano player presses down on the keys. Instruments like trumpets, trombones, flutes, and pipes make sound when air is blown through them. That's why they call them wind instruments. There are even instruments that make sound when they are rubbed by a wet finger. Try wetting your finger and carefully moving it around the rim of a wine glass. With a little bit of practice, you'll hear a lovely sound. Are you two ready? Yeah. yeah! Great! All together now! I know Happy this! Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday, Tom Thomas! Happy birthday to, to me! Tom Thomas, we also wish you
you a happy birthday. You see, Nolik? And you didn't believe that this was music. But I was the first to guess what song it is. Hey, thanks so much for helping me figure out Katya's present. And how about sending a song to Katya? Yeah. We can write down the musical notes to a song about the Fixies. The Fixies? We can't. We can't write down the words. But if it's just the notes there, then it's no problem. Hooray! <laughs> Want to play it? Of course we do. The movie. He fakes left. He shoots. Ha! Class! And can you do it backwards? Yeah, sure. <gasps> no way! What a shot! Huh. I wish Simka could see this. Why don't we make a movie for Simka about fire? We can use my fixie tub. It's got a camera. How come it's only for Simka? We'll make it for all of us. That's a great idea. I'll shoot the ball at the basket, and Nolik will do the filming. And what do we do? You can be whatever you want, like cheerleaders or the coaches. Yeah, a cheerleader. Help me in. Motion pictures, or movies, appeared more than 100 years ago after the invention of celluloid film. A movie is made up of a series of still photographs called frames. When you look at the frames quickly, one after another, the picture on the screen appears to move. It's hard to believe, but the first viewers got very scared when they saw a moving train on the screen. <laughs> At first, films were silent. Only later did people learn to make them with sound. And soon after that, people learned to make movies in full beautiful color. Movies aren't shot on film anymore. They're made with digital cameras. Today, almost all phones and tablets come with digital cameras inside of them. This makes it easy for just about anybody to make their own movie and share it with their friends. Fire is the best. Ooh, he can shoot the best. Hey, I haven't turned the camera on yet. Get ready. Here we go. Yep. Fire is the best. Show me. Yep. Fire is the best. And where's the ball? It flew over there. That's not right. You have to see the ball flying in the picture. I got it. Get ready. Uh. Fire is the best. How was that? It worked. I got it. Fire is the best. And where am I? You're somewhere over there. And we aren't there. Why did you have us cheering? Nolik, you need to make sure we're all in the shot. Okay, I'll try. the shots and you do the filming. Fire can't even hit the basket. You try to hit the basket when everybody's bothering you. Oh, so it's our fault, hmm? Why don't you learn how to play? Are you fighting again? <laughs> We're shooting a film. Whoa! Can I see it? There's nothing for you to see. All I have is pieces. And not one is right. Don't worry. It's no problem. All it needs is editing. What does it need? <laughs> Movies are not usually shot all at once, just a piece at a time. And each of these pieces can be shot several times with the camera in different places. Then there's plenty to choose from. After you're done shooting, you can take all of the best shots and put them one after another to make your movie. This process is called editing. Editing allows us to make movies that show things that could be impossible to shoot all at once. Well, let's see. For this first shot, we've got this take over here, 
For the ball going in, we've got this one. And I like this one of me shooting. And don't forget to put in me and Tula. Of course not. So here's what we've got. Fire is the best footage. The film is super. Can I try to edit it? Yeah, go ahead. Now we have something to show to our teacher. And Digit, too. <laughs> and Papus and Masia. Look, I did my own editing in the movie. What was that? That's not true. It is so. With editing, it's just not fair, Nolik. Fire was able to put it in a hundred times without any editing. You sure didn't. Hey, guys, don't fight. Do you want me to teach you all the right way to shoot hoops? Yeah! yeah. All right, here we go. And shoot! Fire is the best! Oh, he can shoot the best! <laughs> the spray can. Uh-huh! Footprints, just like I suspected. Are those your footprints? Not, Not ours. ours. Then what's on your shoes? What a mess I got into. Pew! <laughs> it's bug spray! <coughs> Elisa! <coughs> what a terrible smell! What is it? It's poison! <coughs> Why do we need poison? I've had this gnawing suspicion for quite a long time that something is living in our laboratory! And so, yesterday, after it got dark, I quietly dusted the table with flour. And so... Look! Don't you see? Footprints. And I want to destroy them. <gasps> destroy who? You really haven't figured it out? Cockroaches live here. A cockroach? That's <laughs> what you think you are. Eh, uh, what makes you sure that it's a cockroach? What else could it be? Well, uh, maybe a spider. Hmm. Well, spiders are cute. And nice, too. But then where is the spider where? Uh, uh, I don't know. Exactly. It's cockroaches. That stuff is gross. Where's that stuff coming from? It's from an aerosol spray can, Nolik. <laughs> aerosol is made of tiny little drops and particles that can hang in the air for quite a long time. Dust, smoke, and fog, they are all aerosols. People learned to make aerosols long ago. For instance, they took a liquid that repels mosquitoes, poured it into a can, and injected some gas into it. Then, when you push the button, the gas forces the liquid to go out through a tiny hole, turning it into a bug spray. That spray will poison the fixies. We have got to stop Elisa. Let's destroy the aerosol can. we switch it with a can of whipped cream. Quit joking. We've got to get Elisa to believe that it's a spider and not cockroaches. She thinks spiders are cute. You're right. Let's go get Buggy. Spray cans have all sorts of different uses. For example, they're very convenient for getting medicine into a sore throat. They can be used to fill the air with the sweet smell of perfume or to cover unpleasant smells with deodorant. Spraying paint from a can is also very useful. It applies the paint very evenly. Some spray cans are even used for food. But there can also be deadly poisons inside of spray cans, like bug killer. So make sure you know which one you're using. And you must always remember how to handle spray cans properly so that nobody gets hurt. You must never open, take apart, or pierce a spray can. And spray cans should never be heated or put next to an open fire, because they contain gas that can explode. Friends, 
right? Would you help us? Please? <gasps> there are new tracks here. Well, roaches, prepare to die. Are you ready? Go ahead. Run! <gasps> oh, don't kill Buggy. No! <gasps> you are so cute! What a sweet little spider. Can I be your friend? That worked great! I hope that's the end of her spraying that poison. My little spider, I almost poisoned you. Spider, where are you going? Aren't we friends? Yeah, that's a good idea. You're better off being our friend. Buggy, wait! She's upset. She could have been poisoned and we didn't tell her. I'm sure she'll forgive us if we go and apologize. The key card. Whoopa! Well, Professor Eugenius, your kennel's back in action. TV! Ah, oh, why, thank you. I've been longing for a cup of tea. Yes. There's no tea left in here. Uh, mm. Then I'll go ask Lisa if she has some. <gasps> Look! Professor Eugenius! You forgot the key! The key! Don't close the door! Simka, you must be joking. That's a key. This is nothing but a plastic card. But it is a key. A special kind. It's called a key card. <laughs> to open up a combination lock, you need to enter a code in the correct order. That means if you can't remember the code, you can't open the lock. But if the lock uses a key card, there isn't any code to memorize. Because the code is held inside the card's memory. And the lock can read the code from the card. Of course, key cards don't work with any lock. They have to be smart locks that are able to read electronic codes. When the smart lock reads the correct code, it opens right up. Lisa, do we have any tea here? Of course, Professor Eugenius. Wonderful. I'll take one bag then. Oh, I left my key inside the lab. Can I borrow yours? Just don't forget to give it back. Of course I'll give it back. Come on, Elisa. I got myself a tea bag. Professor Eugenius, the water's boiling. Fantastic. Ta 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 ta. Ch ch chai. Wait a second. Ah, oh no. I was supposed to give something back to Elisa. Why don't you go and ask her? Right. I'll be right back. Professor Eugenius! That's card number two now. Elisa, I promised you something, didn't I? Yes, the key. You said you'd return it. Oh, yeah, sure. Let me get it. Just a sec. Oh, oh, I locked it in the lab. It's terrible. How will you ever get back into the laboratory now? You see, there is one way, but it's a secret. Would you mind leaving for a couple of minutes? Colleague, Professor, can you do me a little favor? The key. I think I left it on the table. Yeah, right. It's true. So how do we solve this? I need to think about it. What's there to think about? We just have to go and push it under the door. You think you can do it? Yeah! It's time to get to work. Hey, what's going on? Oh, were you just calling for me? Yeah, uh, no, Lisa, not for you. It's so heavy. Do you know where Digit ran off to? Uh -uh. Digit's off somewhere thinking. He's always doing that when it's time to work. Ugh. Hard to port. Hard to starboard. Way to go, Nolik. Uh, then who were you talking to? <laughs> Actually... Oh, what's that? Where? What? <laughs> what was that? Come on, let's try again. <laughs> Look, do you see that? Ah, that, it's a telekinesis. It's the power to transport things with your mind. You are just astounding. <gasps> was that done with your mind too? The door, yeah, sure. You are a genius. 
Professor Eugenius is a very talented scientist and a dear old friend of the Fixies. He always helps the Fixies, and the Fixies are happy to help him too. Professor Eugenius let the Fixies set up their school right here at his laboratory. It's hard to imagine a better place for a Fixie school. People from all over the city bring all sorts of things to the laboratory to be tested, from computers, phones, and furniture, to food and toys. Professor Eugenius uses his expertise to check the quality of all these different things. To help him carry out his experiment, his laboratory is filled with a variety of tools and machines. Yes, Professor Eugenius is a very smart man, but he can be absent-minded. Lucky for him, he's got us fixies around. Thanks for everything. Sliding the keycard under the door? That was Simka's awesome idea. But the door opened wide while the card was still on the floor. That's strange. There's nothing strange about it. I'm the one who opened it. How? how? I climbed in the lock, that's all. Figured out how it worked and... Tadish! Very clever. That's a real Tadish. I guess that thinking before you go and fix something ought to be what we all study next. The Manipulator. Well, what do you say, Professor? It couldn't be any more accurate. Our manipulator works just perfectly. Good! So that means that we're free to go. Great. See you later. All right, finally. Now it's our turn to experiment with that manipulator. And do you know how to operate this manipulator? <laughs> Why do you think we were spying? A manipulator is a kind of mechanical arm that people use for difficult or dangerous work. To control a manipulator, humans use a remote control or a joystick. The operator gives the command, and the mechanical arm grabs and moves the load. Some robotic manipulators don't even need to be steered by an operator. They're controlled by computers and can work without people being there at all, even on the moon. Huh. What is this button for? Uh-huh. How about this one? Uh-huh. Would you like to take a ride right now? Huh, you're scared. Scared? <laughs> Not one bit. Then off we go. Yeah, cool. Ha, this is totally awesome. Well, hang on. This is going to get even awesomer. Professor? Hmm, strange. What made this ladder just fall over? Ah! Am I crazy? Or is someone here? Oh, calm down. Calm down now. Poor Elisa. Yeah, you're completely overworked. Hang in there, Nolik. I'll get you out of there. My compact's gone. Oh, dear. What's going on? <gasps> Stop this nonsense right now, or I'll call the police on you. I don't believe in ghosts. I don't believe in ghosts. I don't believe in... <gasps> Where are you pulling me? I'm going to faint. I'm warning you. That's all. Goodbye. <sighs> Throughout the world, humans use manipulators for all sorts of work. In factories, manipulators are used to lift and move heavy loads. They can also hand out the parts needed for assembly or even attach these parts themselves. In hospitals, more precise manipulators are used by doctors to help perform operations. Manipulators are also used in places where the work is simply too dangerous for people. For instance, where there are deadly chemicals, or places where humans can't get to easily. Like somewhere underground where there isn't enough space to move, or deep under the water. Or in outer space where there's absolutely no <laughs> air to breathe. So you see, mechanical arms are helpful in all sorts of places where humans are unable to reach things with their own arms. Hang on, Nolik. How can I 
get that thing open. Oh, I got it! Yes, who's there? Ah! What's going on? Ah, ah, ah. No, Nolik? What are you doing in there? Achoo! We just <laughs> took a little test flight. Is this yours? <gasps> Elisa! Elisa! Professor Eugenius! I was attacked by a crazy arm! The manipulator! <laughs> it's your imagination! Look, it's come back! Stop! Stop, I'm telling you! Professor Eugenius, it heard what you just said. Calm down, it's okay. It was a little malfunction, but I took care of it. You are just astounding! And don't think that I'm through with you! With me? With you? <laughs> no, no, with the manipulator. Let's go, Elisa. Yeah, let's go, Professor. Great job, fire. And why fire? <laughs> the armor. 2, 23, 24, 25. Ready or not, here, here we come. come. I heard him. He ran into the hallway. You check the kitchen, Nolik, and I'll check the living room. inside of that shark. Yeah? Then in that huge vase. Uh-huh. He's all scrunched up in there and laughing at us. <laughs> oh! Simka! There! Did you hear that? He is in there! There's no one. But I know that I heard a hee-hee. You imagined it. Let's go take a look in the bathroom. <laughs> imagined it. <sighs> it's so stuffy inside this armor. <laughs> the arms got stuck. Where else could he be? Oh, who is that? Ah! of the night, he came to life. Well, how much longer are you going to look for me? Arbor is very hard clothing worn by warriors to protect them against swords and arrows. People started making armor in ancient times, but the full body armor that knights wore didn't start until the Middle Ages. The armor worn by knights on horses was heavy. It could weigh a hundred pounds, and if a knight got knocked off of his horse, he'd need help to get back up again. By the way, the knights' horses, they wore their own heavy set of armor for protection. Hey, did you turn into statues? Tom Thomas? Is that you in there? Who else? Lift up this visor, I can barely breathe. <laughs> and how come we should do it? Cause I can't, don't you see? My arms got stuck. We see? <laughs> you look funny. Funny to you, but now I'm stuck and I can't get out of here. Come on, help me out, please. <laughs> Chusaka's just what we need right now. Chusaka, what's wrong with you? It's me. Hey, stop it. Help, I can't get up. Come on, let's undo the latches, Nolik, quickly. Thanks for helping me. It was nothing. I couldn't have done it without you. Let's put the knight back 
together. Uh-huh. Before Dad gets back. Protective clothing isn't just for people who are fighting in battles. Travelers put on special nets to protect themselves against mosquitoes and gnats. And beekeepers wear protective clothes, too. If they had nothing to protect them from bee stings, their job would be quite painful. <laughs> Without their protective clothing, it would be impossible for firefighters to go into burning buildings and save people. And how could astronauts go into outer space without special clothing? It's freezing up there and there's no air to breathe at all. And that's why they wear a special costume called a spacesuit when they travel. The spacesuit not only protects astronauts from the cold, but supplies them with air so they can breathe. By the way, the Fixies also wear protective clothing so they can stay safe while they work. Well, there. Did we get it right? It looks like we got it right. Only, where's the helmet? No look when to get it. Tom Thomas! Helmet delivery! Thanks there, Chusaka. Whoa there, Warhorse. Calm yourself down. There we go. It's all back in place again. Too bad that your knight <laughs> looks like a ballerina twirling around. You see, his arm. Ugh, I can't move it. It's stuck. Here's what we'll do. Give him something to hold. Well, how's that look? Perfect. Now we can paddle into battle. <laughs> Chess. Hmm. How about that? <laughs> then I'll play my pawn. And I'll play my pawn. <laughs> Grandpa's, we need our spool, and it's missing. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> Professor, have you seen it anywhere? The spool? I haven't seen it. We're playing chess, can't you see? Do you like board games? Like dominoes, for instance. Just about everybody has played it. But do you know where it came from? Dominoes was invented by the ancient Chinese. They made tiles and decorated them with dots like on a pair of dice. And this is a game that looks a lot like checkers, but it's a lot more challenging. It's called backgammon. Backgammon originated in Persia, and from there it spread all over the world. But the most challenging game of them all is the game of chess. Chess was invented in India, and today the game of chess is loved in every country. It's played by adults, by children, and even by computers. Chess is a real sport. But the most important thing for playing chess is not the power in your arms, but the power in your brain. What's going on? <gasps> That's our spool. Please let us take it back. There's something we have to do with it. But we're using it. Can't you wait? It's a replacement for the missing pawn. Uh, oh, Nola can work for a while as the pawn's replacement. Yeah. I can do it. All right. You can take it. And you stand right over here. One, two, three, up we go. Flat. So how do we play? You're going to play for the whites. And now I'm going to capture your knight. And we... We're going to knock over yours. Take that. Whoa, 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 young man. Slow down. It goes back here. Uh, yeah. uh, uh. No, like, get back to your square. What for? Pawns don't move like that. Then how do they move? Only one square per move, and only forward. <laughs> of all of the pieces, the little pawn is the weakest. What a mess. So which one's strongest, huh? This. It's the queen. She's the most dangerous threat to the other king. Aw, how come I couldn't be queen? Then that black king would have to deal with me. Oh, yes. In chess, each player has a black or white army with eight pawns, two knights, two bishops, two castles, and a queen. All of them work together for their king, trying to protect him while attacking the enemy's king. If the king finds himself in a position where he can be captured, the attacking player says check. And if the king finds himself with nowhere to run from the attack, it's called checkmate. Whoever checkmates the other player's king first is the winner. 
move my queen. Yeah. And me, my queen. Huh? Then I'll just capture your queen. Aha! Really? Then I'll just capture yours. Grandpus, should I go now? Not yet. So, do you feel like surrendering? Ha! You're kidding. Do you? No, Lick. Forward. Hooray! We'll step aside. Forward. Aha! Next I'll go and capture the knight. He got away. All right, Pawnin, once more. Go forward. Gra Grandpus, where do I go now? Don't you see the edge? Don't go anywhere. <laughs> now you're the queen. What? The rules of chess say that if a pawn makes it all the way to the other side, he can become anything that was captured earlier. Hooray! Then I'll be the queen, and I'll be the strongest piece in the whole game. Hey, queen, get back here. In case you don't know, this isn't over yet. <laughs> we capture the pawn with the queen. Queen, this is your new place. Check. Check. Huh, yeah? <laughs> Now come to here. Checkmate, my colleague. <laughs> of course it is. <laughs> it is, mate. Yeah, I lost. <laughs> Hooray! Tadish, tadish, tadish! <laughs> Professor, we found the missing pawn for you. So that means Nola can leave with us. I'm not going anywhere with you. Chess is the greatest game you'll ever play in your life. All you should have seen how I put Professor Eugenius in a checkmate. Really? Well, Grandpa's helped me a little. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it was Grandpa's telling me where to move. <gasps> but I'm the queen now. The music box. <laughs> and when the Pied Piper began to play his magical <laughs> flute, the rats came out of their holes and followed him. And they never would be seen in Hamlin ever again. Whew. And then what? Huh? I can't read anymore. My legs got tired. Whew. Simka, Nolik, something's rustling in there. In where? In Dad's office. It's on his desk. It's inside the wooden container. Hmm. So maybe there's a mouse inside it. Tom Thomas, sit right here while Nolik and I go and check. And if there's a mouse in there for real, then how are we going to get it out? Those rodents are really so big. And why was I reading that book to you, huh? Just grab a flute, give it a toot, and the mice will scoot. And where are the flutes going to come from? We'll make them. Toot, 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 toot. You got it? <laughs> sure I did. Wait a second. Let's get a little closer. <laughs> See? It's just like I told you. No more mice in there. So let's toot a little more so they won't go back in. All right. So you're the ones messing around out here. Oh, Grandpus, it's you here. All day I can't work on what I need to do. Right from the start, someone's opening up the top, and then you two tooting back. It was Simka who came up with the tooting. Just because you're afraid of mice. Wow, what kind of machine is this? Well, what do you think? Mmm, a coffee grinder? Mm, no. A hole puncher. <laughs> a foot scratcher? What? what? Well, a machine for scratching your feet. <laughs> You're joking all the time, you. It's a music box, and it's just wonderful. <laughs> music boxes were invented more than 200 years ago. Inside, there is usually a cylinder with short pins sticking up from it. In front of the cylinder, there is a comb with metal teeth of different lengths. If you pluck one of the teeth, it will make a pleasant sound. A short tooth makes a higher sound, and a long one, lower. When the cylinder spins around, the pins pluck the different teeth, and music plays. Awesome! So what's broken in here? The spring slipped off. It has to be pushed back into the right place.
Will you help? That's better. How come the music's not playing? First, you have to wind up the spring with the key. Tideesh! I know who can wind up the spring. Well, Tom Thomas, can you guess what kind of machine this is? A paper cutter. Uh-uh. How about a hole puncher? <laughs> You're such a joker. Now, don't go and tell me it's a foot scratcher. Then I don't know. Then wind it up with the key and you'll find out. Do you want to know how the higher and lower sounds come out? Put a regular ruler over the edge of a table. Hold down one end of the ruler and pluck on the other. The shorter you make the end hanging off the table, the higher the sound will be. The teeth inside of a music box work the same way. And bells work the same way too. The smaller the bell, the higher it rings. The sound of a violin or a guitar depends on how thick the strings are. Fat strings make a lower sound, and thin strings a higher one. How tight the string is also makes a difference. Take a piece of string or a rubber band, tie one end to a doorknob, and pull on the other end. With your free hand, pluck the string. The tighter the string gets stretched out, the higher the sound. If you want, you can even play a tune. I think I got it now. It's an old player for music. That's close, but not it. A music box is what they call it. I just said that. So what was it in there, hmm? Just a broken spring. It's not the thing I'm dying to know. Who was moving around there? All I'll say is we, Tom Thomas. Won't let that secret out. Shh. The spare part. What's going on? It was just working. Hi there, Tom Thomas. Simka Nolik. Look, I've got a problem. Sorry, no time to play. We're busy. Busy? With what? We got put in charge here for the day. We even get to use one of the Pagamats. Papus and Masia went out to visit our Fixie friends. Papus used to be with them at the Space Center years ago. Ever since he was a boy, Papus dreamed of going into space. Then why not? Fixies work on rockets, too. He even got a job at the Astronaut Training Center. He was put in charge of the centrifuge, and he made sure it worked perfectly. The centrifuge is a sort of very fast carousel for training astronauts. And Papus trained inside of it, too. Unfortunately, Papus never knew the rocket was scheduled to fly on his day off. And when he found out, it was too late, and the rocket blasted off without him. Since then, Papus hates his days off, but he still longs to fix something like that centrifuge. You know, something turning around like a washing machine. Too bad for Papus that the one in his house seems to keep working perfectly fine. So that means today you fix everything? Uh-huh. Well then, it's your lucky day, because my car just broke down. Hooray! We've got work to do. Nolik, let's go! Well, what broke down here? Wait a sec. Here, this part burned out. It's all covered in black. I wonder where we can get the same part, but a clean one. A clean one? Hmm. <gasps> Nolik! Genius! There's the same exact part inside the dishwasher. We can take it from there. Come on! Do you have any idea how all these parts are connected to one another? With this thing right under you. It's a special part called a circuit board. A circuit board's made like this. First, the board gets covered with a thin layer of metal. Then, paths are laid onto the board where the electricity is going to flow. After that, all of the extra metal is washed off of it with a special cleaning liquid, leaving the metal paths that were drawn on the board. These paths work just like wires to connect the parts on the board to each other. And then all that's left to do is attach those parts to their places on the paths. 
Again. Tom Thomas, I'm about to start the dishwasher. Are there any dirty dishes in your room? Nah. Slow down. Slow what down? Slow down your mom. We took the new part out of the dishwasher, see? Mom, wait, don't start it. You need to put, put, yeah, put in this one uh, dirty cup. Nolan, follow me. Inside the TV's the same part. the dishwasher. <sighs> we barely made it. We grabbed the part from the TV in the living room. Not the TV. Uh, my mom's favorite program is about to start. <gasps> ah! <sighs> the television is working now. And where'd you get the part for it? From your dad's computer in his office. Hi, everybody. I'm home. Hi, hon. Are you ready for dinner? In a bit. I've got to finish a little work on the computer. Simka, hurry. Where else can we find that part? Stop. That's enough running. Here, take it back from the car. And then we put the part back into the computer and it started working again. Oh, that was really silly. Remember, you little experts, never repair any device at the cost of another one. I understand now. And I understand. If you were smart, you could have taken the part out of the old radio in the closet. Papus, but you know the radio wouldn't work then. That old thing hasn't been working for years. Marcia and I have pulled out half of those parts already. The microwave. <sighs> okay, children, for today's lesson, we're going to learn about the microwave oven. It's a very special appliance that people use to heat all sorts of different foods up. Oh, wow. Is there any chance that we could get heated up here? You'll find out about that, too, if you'll pay attention, of course. Whoa! Got it? Now listen carefully. I'm listening. I'm listening. Of course, young Fixies go to school just like human kids. But their parents teach them a lot of important lessons, too. Fixie parents take their kids on tours of all sorts of different devices and teach them what Fixies can do to keep them working properly. They like to show them how the computers or televisions or gaming systems work, or any one of the many appliances they take care of inside of the kitchen, like the stove. Every once in a while, a new device appears in the house, something that the Fixies have never dealt with before. To learn how this new thing works, the Fixies gather together and read the instructions that the humans keep printing up, but almost never seem to take the time to read for themselves. So now it's time to look at the magnetron. That's what emits the microwaves. Oh, and so the food absorbs the microwaves, and that's what heats it up. That's right. And now, look carefully to your left. Hooray! Freedom! Oh, Tom Thomas! What do you say? Want to watch cartoons? I can't. I need to do my homework. Then just do it quickly. For some reason, whenever I start doing homework, I always get hungry for some food. Then just eat faster! No. The faster I eat, the sooner I'll have to start doing my homework. Mmm, you already got cold. I need to go warm it up. One minute should be enough. These aren't just ordinary wires. These are for... Oh! Oh! Masya, what's going on? It looks like it might be an overload. The microwave might burn out. Then we better run out of here. What do you mean, run? We need, we need to save this microwave.
Titties. Oh, what's wrong with the microwave? It looks like it just broke. Who cares if it broke? What matters is that Simka and Masya aren't broken. Look, there's no one here. <laughs> of course not. We were <coughs> behind the wall. You wouldn't believe what happened in there. Oh, oh there you go. Tom Thomas, why did you put that fork into the microwave? Why not? You mean I'm not allowed? Remember, never put any metal objects into a microwave. If you put forks or spoons in a microwave, you can burn it out. And then not even a fixie will be able to fix it. Even a thin metal border on a plate can cause serious problems. Also, never warm up food in sealed packages or bottles inside a microwave. And one last thing, don't even think of cooking eggs in their shells in there. They'll just explode. Sorry, I didn't know any of that. No, like, and what were you thinking? Why didn't you warn Tom Thomas about this? Hmm? Oh, I, uh... Oh, today you skipped school. And now you don't know it either. No, like, where are you going? I'm talking to you. Huh, where else? I gotta go study all about microwaves. And I'll go do my homework now. But first you'll sit down and eat for a while, right? No, I'm not gonna eat food. First I'll go and play some games for an hour or so. The refrigerator. Good job. My homework is all done. piece of gum. It's my bubble gum. Oh, thanks a lot, Tom Thomas. Now what's the plan to get me unstuck from here? Here's what we do. It's got to be frozen. Once I sat on gum too and my mom put my pants in the freezer, the gum froze up and it came right off. I don't want to go into the freezer. Don't worry, Nolik. I'll stay right here with you. Just hold on. It won't take long at all. Huh. Why do I need to hold on? The gum's already holding on to me. Simka, do you know why it's so cold in the freezer when outside it's warm? I'll explain it to you. A refrigerator has a pump that pushes a special liquid through a long tube. Inside the refrigerator, the liquid in the tube wants to turn into a gas. To do that, it takes the heat from everything inside, and that makes the refrigerator cool. Then the pump sucks in the gas and pushes it out as a hot liquid into the tubes on the back of the refrigerator. That lets all of the heat collected from the inside escape into the air outside. Uh, I wish I was somewhere warm. Hold on. I'll go get us some warm clothes to wear. I don't want to hold on. I want to go with you. Just hang in there. I'm hanging. Tom Thomas, open up! Marcia, do we have any warm clothing to wear? Why in the world do you need it? I just do. Well, I need to know what is happening. <laughs> Hooray! Tom Thomas, Simka, open up the door! It looks like I'm gonna freeze up in here for good. 
A Fixie is constantly surrounded by all sorts of danger. Inside a dark freezer, a Fixie can lose his way and freeze to death. If he's not paying attention, he can drown inside of a washing machine or inside of a dishwasher. And a careless Fixie is always at risk of getting an electric shock. Or suppose there's a short circuit inside of an appliance that starts a fire. If this happens, you need to run away if you want to survive. And what about humans? Well, they don't even believe that we Fixies exist at all, so they can accidentally drop something on top of a Fixie, or step on one, or kick us across the room. So if we don't get out of the way in time, ah! Oh! So what I'm saying, Fixies, you need to be careful out there and pay attention. So be smart and stay safe, fellow Fixies. I don't understand this at all. He was right here. Poor Nolik. I wonder where he went. Look at this! Footprints! Nolik! You're alive! You scared me half to death! How did you get out of there? Well, you told me about how a refrigerator works. And so I found that cold tube and started crawling on it until it got hot, and then I was here! Hey, there's smoke coming out of you. We need to cool you down right away! Huh? Where? <laughs> Look how it froze. I could break my teeth on it. You aren't going to chew it anymore. I'd never do that. Not after Nolik sat on it. Well, you didn't need to stick it where it doesn't belong. Hey, I apologize. I'll go and throw it away. Maybe you'll try the trash can? <laughs> 